This video is for you if you're curious to learn about how ketamine works, in particular for mood disorders like depression. There is so much more to ketamine than just on the biological level, so I want to explain with you about four different mechanisms of action of how ketamine may be working for an individual. I'm Dr. Ko from Reset Ketamine in Palm Springs, California. And so let's answer this question. How does ketamine work? I like to break this question down into four different mechanisms of action. So number one is biological. We know from a biological level that ketamine seems to increase neurogenesis, synaptic connections as well. So literally growth of new neurons in the brain, as well as stronger synapses, the connections in between each neuron. And how is that working? Well, there's a protein called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And BDNF is almost kind of like miracle grow for the brain. So imagine a tree in the middle of winter, very cold, all the leaves are diminished, the branches are dry and thin. Whereas in the spring and summer, there's new leaves, there's stronger branches, they seem more robust. So in a way, if you can think about your neurons and your brain cells kind of being like this tree where ketamine seems to be a fertilizer for the brain cells. So that's how we think it's working on a biological level. Number two is the psychological level. So ketamine seems to allow the patients to go into their unconscious mind and it's almost like doing a look underneath of a car hood where you're like let me just see what's going on underneath of here so we've noticed that some patients will have old emotions or memories or various experiences kind of come up to the surface during the ketamine therapy maybe things that they've been holding down if you think about the word depression well depress what am i depressing what am i pushing down rather than letting it come up to the surface. And ketamine seems to have patients' experiences and maybe past memories just float up and kind of become more aware in their conscious mind. And by doing that, you can kind of see what's going on underneath. From a functional perspective, number three, one of the things that we've noticed is that ketamine seems to decrease activity of a portion of the brain called the default mode network. The default mode network is where the brain, when it's resting, not doing anything active, there's still some activity that's happening. And we think that the default mode network may be kind of where the ego resides or where these old limiting stories or beliefs or habits or patterns may be originating from. So ketamine seems to disrupt activity of the default mode network, which then allows someone to create some new connections in the brain. Also, from a functional perspective, there are some EEG studies, electroencephalograms, so like these little electrodes that we put over the patient's scalp. And it seems to induce a different type of brainwave, in particular, theta waves and gamma waves. And those waves are kind of like the waves that are seen during deep, long-term meditation practices, where when someone is in a meditative zone, they can enter those type of brainwave physiology. Well, similarly, during the ketamine experiences, people actually can enter into those brainwaves physiology where it's a little bit more calmer, where you may be able to implant some new beliefs, some new ideas, kind of like reprogramming the brain while you're in that state. And the fourth and last mechanism, there's really no science behind this, I'll be honest with you. It's kind of the spiritual experience or spiritual mechanism of action. You know, we know that as a human that we have our cells and we have our organs and tissue and our body. But what if there's something that's beyond that? A lot of our patients will report these spiritual mystical types of experiences. It might be like a near death experience where literally they feel like they're dying or they've dissolved. Or they may feel like this connection with God or source or universe. Or they may feel like this interrelated connection between all human beings. So something that transcends just you, but something that goes beyond you, kind of beyond the metaf metaphysical. Again, there's really no science for that last mechanism of action, but I have noticed that a lot of our patients do report these spiritual types of experiences. And in particular, if they've already had a spiritual practice to begin with, sometimes it'll become stronger for those individuals. So to recap, those four mechanisms of actions are the biological, the psychological, 
the functional and the spiritual mechanisms of action.